good morning students so today we'll discuss the um, topics related to that is uh, chapter number 4 agriculture some topics are left so in the last class we discussed about uh, that is uh, crop uh, types of farming uh, on the basis of which thing that is cropping pattern and there we discussed uh, what is single crop farming what is double crop farming what is multiple cropping what is called as interculture these things we already discussed and also we discuss the types of farming on the basis of the humidity availability of water and also the uh, method to supply the water that means by rain water or by irrigation facility so there are three types of farming present dry farming wet farming irrigation farming so this thing also we already discussed next that is Uh, on the basis of cropping season uh, there are three types of crop cultivation present according to the season this thing also we discussed next that is right to inheritance that means how the ownership of the agricultural land is going from the owner to the successor and then gradually in india that is the size of the agricultural land becomes small smaller smallest and what type of problem that is created this thing also we discussed next also we discuss how to improve the scenario in indian agricultural system that we know that farmers are committing suicide why the present generation uh, does not want to become farmer uh, so to solve the problem to improve the scenario in indian agricultural system we have brought some positive changes that means government has taken some effective steps it may be related to the institutional reforms and it may be technological reforms it may be techno institutional reforms these things also we already we discussed now come to the today's topic and the topic is that is cropping season already we discussed that is what there is one type of year present which is called as agricultural year so in this year there are three types of season present in this year means that is in the agricultural year there are three types of season present one that is called as kharif season Uh, we can correlate this uh, cropping season according to the that is season according to climatic condition like kharif season is equal to wet summer season or it is called as rainy season or it is called as advancing monsoon season and ravi season is equal to that is the dry winter season and jazz season is equal to dry summer season so let us discuss in detail so how many types of cropping season we have seen there are three types of cropping cropping season present kharif season ravi season and jazz season and i have also told that how can you correlate with the season according to the climatic condition that kharif season is equal to wet summer season or rainy season or the advancing monsoon season ravi season is equal to dry winter season and jazz season is equal to that is dry summer season so first of all kharif season kharif season uh, what is the sowing time uh, that in this season the crops are cultivated in the month of june but it is not always the same that is month of june it depends on the arrival of the monsoon wind and as we know that in india arrival of the monsoon wind it is not come that is uh, uh, confirmed date there is no such type of confirmed date it is irregular sometimes it is come earlier sometimes it is come in late so that's why we have to wait for the arrival of the monsoon winds but generally uh, that is coming in the Uh, month of june and from that time we are starting uh, that that is what the crop cultivation that means sowing of the crops and harvesting time that is uh, that varies from one crop to another crop but it is mainly in the ma- in the month of september or in the month of october next that is what type of crops are cultivated uh, that the crops which require huge amount of water the crops which can tolerate the water logging condition because it is a rainy season and also which can tolerate the high temperature that type of crops are cultivated and beech crops which are cultivated in the kharif season these are called as what kharif crops so let us see paddy maize jowar bajra so jowar bajra these are coming under millets group cotton jute groundnut soybean etc and uh, the crops are mainly cultivated by the help of rain water because it is a rainy season so with the help of rain water we are doing the crop cultivation here we are not that is uh, using the irrigation facility that means collection of the underground water collection of the water from the water bodies this thing we are not doing here because here the uh, this type of crop cultivation in this season the crop cultivation is mainly dependent on the rain water next that is ravi season i ravi season is equal to what type of season according to the climatic condition dry winter season so dry means 
the amount of rainfall is less amount of moisture or humidity is less and winter means temperature is less so in this type of condition in this type of climatic condition the crops which can uh, that is grow these crops are cultivated that means these are called as ravi crops but first of all let us see that sowing time that uh, uh, that is mainly cultivated that is mainly sown in the month of october or november or in the winter season and harvesting time it may be april or it may go up to june it depends on the uh, nature of type of crop next that is with the crops which are cultivated in the ravi season these are called as ravi crops like wheat barley that means the crop which require less temperature and also which require less amount of rainfall these crops are cultivated in this season wheat barley peas gram mustard etc next that is uh, crops are mainly cultivated by the help of irrigation why because in india uh, in this season there is lack of rainfall only one state is having the rainy season in winter that is tamil nadu except tamil nadu uh, no one uh, is going through the rainy season in winter that's why we have to depend on the irrigation facility that is ravi season now come to the next jet season it is a very uh, that is uh, uh, small season small season means it uh, depends on the two or three months maximum two months so it's sowing time and harvesting time that is dry summer season dry summer season means it uh, starts from the month of april april may that these two months mainly coming under dry summer season when the temperature is very high but the amount of rainfall is very less so which type of crops are cultivated watermelon musk melon cucumber vegetables fodder etc these are cultivated in this season and crops are cultivated by the help of irrigation why because in this season also the amount of rainfall is very less sometimes due to the uh, that is thunderstorm uh, some amount of rainfall occurs but it is not regular sometimes suddenly happen but mainly we have to depend on the irrigation facility because it is also a dry season now come to the next next topic that is what it is related to the uh, that is uh, distribution of the agricultural land distribution of the villages to the uh, landless or uh, village uh, that is um, landless farmers or landless people so what is the name of this topic that is blood sorry bhudan and gramdan so bhudan gramdan take a look bhu means land and dan means donation gram means village dan means donation that means that we can guess here with the name of the topic that is here someone has donated the land to uh, other person or maybe gram is donated or village is donated to the other person and it is also called as blood less revolution why is it so later we will find out so first of all let us see the say that is uh, what is the incident happened so bino uh, he was uh, that is uh, he was a great follower of uh, that is gandhian concept he was against the violence he supported the concept of uh, that is non violence by gandhi ji and that's why he was uh, that is uh, to promote the concept of non violence uh, he was uh, that is giving lecture at uh, uh, pochampalli in andhra pradesh it is one place it was one place that is in andhra pradesh where he was delivering his lecture and at that time uh, that uh, some poor landless villagers uh, started to demand uh, that uh, we want land we don't have land we are landless farmers that type of demand uh, they started to do in front of him when he was delivering the lecture where at pochampalli in andhra pradesh why to uh, that is uh, spread the concept about the non violence what is the importance of non violence because he was a great follower of gandhi mahatma gandhi that's why next that is what uh, uh, he uh, talked to with these uh, landless villagers landless farmers and assured them that he will uh, talk to the government and he will raise this issue and he will try to solve their problem but uh, suddenly what happened that one person uh, sri ramchandra reddy offered 80 acres of land so uh, this person suddenly understood the problem or it may be that uh, that he uh, understood that uh, that something wrong is going on that's why he decided that he uh, will offer that 80 acres of land and he offered the 80 acres of land to whom 80 villagers that means per head uh, 
that is one acre of land that type of land that is donated and this is called this act is called Bhudan because this person donated the land to the 80 villagers that means 80 acres of land was donated was were donated to the 80 villagers and this act is called as Bhudan donation of land next that is also what according to this trend what happened gradually the zamindars and also the other owners of many villages donated villages to the landless people that means not only land was donated gradually according to this flow according to this trend the villages also were donated to the landless people to the landless farmer and that's why that type of revolution is called as bhudan and gramdan so Bhudan means where the land is do land is donated and Gramdan means where village is donated. That is, so why is it called? Why both of them Bhudan and Gramdan are called as that uh, bloodless revol blood less revolution? Because in this type, in this total process, take a look. Is there any kind of existence of non-violence? Is is there any kind of existence of violence? No, there is no existence of violence so total process total things total incident happened without any kind of loss of a single drop of blood that means there is there was no fighting there was no violence so silently everything happened that uh, that is in the mutual uh, that is you can say that a friendly environment uh, so that's why it is called as bloodless revolution without losing a single drop of blood without any kind of violence this type of drastic change why is it drastic change because maximum time the in past that means before independence that lands agricultural lands were owned by the zamindars so if that type of things happened that means Jaminda started to donate the land to the landless farmers that means a drastic change that means surprising thing happening that's why it is called as revolution and this type of drastic change this type of surprising thing happened without losing a single drop of blood that's why it is called as bloodless revolution. Now come to the next topic that is gene revolution. So gene revolution means here also one type revolution means drastic change which you cannot imagine which we cannot imagine that type of change Sudden, uh, suddenly something positive changes occurred that type of thing is called as revolution. So it is really that type of uh, revolution which is related to the uh, that is uh, the modification of gene or the use of that is uh, DNA to uh, produce some good things that is called a gene revolution. So let us uh, see, let us see what is the meaning of gene revolution. The gene revolution is the application of biotechnology in food production. So first of all biotechnology what is biotechnology biotechnology means it is one type of technology which utilizes biological systems living organisms to develop or create different products now uh, you are thinking sir it is very difficult to understand that i can understand biotechnology means bio means life technology means uh, that we know that is that's why uh, it is biotechnology but what is happening there just one example that we are using the baking uh, bread so how this baking bread is uh, produced that is with the help of biotechnology what we are doing here we are using the living organism that is microorganism yeast that is coming under fungus kingdom and with the help of this yeast we are producing a product that is called as baking bread so this is the example of biotechnology we have used the technology to get uh, a new type of product by using the living organism so what is the living organism used here to um, produce the baking bread that is yeast and yeast is coming under that is fungus kingdom it yeast is coming under that is the microorganism category and we use this yeast and we have used our technology also then we produce a product that is called as baking bread so this is biotechnology it is of great potential to farmers as it provides them with disease free planting material and develops crops that resist pests and diseases reducing use of chemicals that harm the environment and human health so let us uh, understand by this one take a look genetic engineering 
सो वाट इज कॉल्ड एज जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग द टर्म जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग इज यूज टू डिस्क्राइब द प्रोसेस बाई विच द जेनेटिक मेकअप ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिज्म कैन बी ऑल्टर्ड यूजिंग रिकम्बिनेंट डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी सो आई विल टेल लेट अस रीड दिस थिंग देन आई विल टेल यू इन ए सिंपल वे दिस इन्वॉल्व द यूज ऑफ लेबोरेटरी टूल्स टू इंसर्ट ऑल्टर और कट आउट पीसेस ऑफ डी एन ए दैट कंटेन वन और मोर जीन्स ऑफ इंटरेस्ट सो जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग इज रिकॉग्नाइज एज ए पावरफुल सप्लीमेंट इन इन्वेंटिंग न्यू हाइब्रिड वेराइटीज ऑफ सीड्स now uh, let us uh, see let us uh, see and let us discuss this topic so genetic engineering means here that is what we are doing one thing that we are uh, working on dna we are inserting the dna uh, we are deleting the dna we are changing the dna and now uh, in other way we can say thing that is two crops we have uh, two types of rice we have one type of rice which can provide you huge production the production capacity is good but it cannot tolerate the water logging condition clear that means if there will be huge amount of rainfall and if the water logging condition occurred in the agriculture land at that time it cannot tolerate but it has the potentiality to provide you good production another type of rice which has the uh, that is uh, potentiality to sustain in the water logging condition to uh, stay and uh, that is uh, uh, to protect itself from the water logging condition but it does not have the uh, good production capacity now this genetic engineering in this gene revolution what we are do- doing that we are taking the dna from this fast rice who which has that is what which has the good production capacity but uh, weak in water logging condition and also we have taken the dna of uh, that is b number rice that means which has the uh, good quality to uh, that is protect itself from water logging condition but it is not good in production so both the rice uh, that is crop dna that is taken then mixed or that means inserted then altered and then we have prepared new type of rice which can that is uh, tolerate the water logging and also which can give the that is the good production that means what from a we have taken the good quality from b we have taken the good quality then both the dna is mixed that means altered or inserted then we have prepared a new type of that is seed of rice and that is what that is having the uh, good production capacity and also that can easily tolerate the water logging condition so that is called as the genetic engineering that is called as the gene revolution so in this way in by this type of method we are making different type of hyb seeds high yield variety seeds or we can say genetically modified crops and with this genetic engineering with the help of this gene revolution the next revolution in that is entered in uh, indian agricultural system that is called as green revolution because green revolution is mainly dependent on the that is uh, the introduction of the hyb seeds so that's why uh, that genetic engineering gene revolution these two topics are important in the agricultural development so again i'm telling what is the summary that here the genes that means dna this thing is altered this thing is inserted this thing is changed then we are getting a new type of thing new type of product that is called as what genetic engineering with the help of the genetic engineering we are getting the modified genetically modified crops which uh, is having um, that is genet- that type of crop is having so many positive things that we are trying to remove the negative things from the crops that is called a genetically modified crops or hyb seeds also we can say now come to the next horticulture it is one type of crop cultivation it is one type of agricultural agricultural activity so first of all come to the literal meaning of the word horticulture the word horti uh, that is coming from the word hortus it is one latin word and hortus means garden that means this type of crop cultivation is mainly done where that is in the garden so in this type of crop cultivation uh, what type of crops are cultivated mainly flowers fruits and vegetables are cultivated and this type of farming is mainly done that is in gardens that's why it is also called as garden farming and when flowers are cultivated in horticulture then it is called as what floriculture 
that means cultivation of flower floriculture and cultivation of fruit that is called as pomam culture and cultivation of vegetables that is called as olary culture so that means floriculture plus pomam culture plus olary culture is equal to horticulture so that means if you are doing only cultivation of flower at that time it is also horticulture but it is the part of horticulture which is called as floriculture when you are doing the crop cultivation that is called as cultivation of fruit at that time it is called as pomam culture but it is also the part of horticulture and when we are cultivating vegetables then it is called as olary culture but it is also the part of horticulture and horticulture is also called as truck farming why it is called as truck farming because truck is one type of vehicle which is mainly that is uh, used uh, which is mainly used as carrier goods carrier so what is the relation with truck and this is a horticulture because horticulture is mainly done that is in the uh, just in the outskirts of the town or any type of big market so that's why that uh, what type of crops are cultivated here flowers fruits vegetables which are perishable items and uh, that's why you have to send them easily and quickly to the market after the uh, that is collection of flowers after the collection of fruits and vegetables that if you want to sell it in the market that means you have to send it quickly to the market because after collection from the agricultural land its quality is gradually decreasing it is perishable item that's why you have to sell it quickly in the market and who can help you that is the truck uh, that's why uh, because i have told it is one type of goods carrier that's why it is also called as truck farming because this vehicle helps in the development of horticulture helps in the uh, that is uh, selling of the crops in the market that's why it is called as truck farming now come to the next staple crop so it is uh, what is staple crop staple crop means what it depends on your uh, that is menu chart it depends on your diet chart thing if you have you have asked to the people of haryana and punjab that which crop you are mainly eating uh, each and every day then punjab and haryana people will prefer and will say that is what that uh, uh, we prefer that is uh, wheat we don't prefer rice but if you go to that is uh, Odisha, West Bengal, then you, if you'll ask that uh, what type of crop uh, you prefer to eat maximum time in a day, that means which crop is dominating in your diet chart, which crop is mainly providing you the sufficient amount of energy. At that time, the people of Odisha and West Bengal, they will tell that is what, uh, that we prefer rice. So many people present, those who are taking rice for two times or may maybe three times also. So if you go to the southern India, the people of southern India, they will also prefer uh, that is rice. That means rice is dominating in their diet chart. So that type of crop which is dominating in the diet chart, in the food chart, that is called as what staple crop. It may vary from one state to another state uh, that I have already told some examples. So what is staple crop eaten regularly? eaten in high quantity dominating in diet chart supply large portion of energy needs just like in west bengal and that is uh, odisha so which crop is eaten regularly rice i have told it may go up to three times also and eaten in high quantity that means they are taking heavy meal with the help of rice and also that is uh, dominating in diet chart three times i have told it may go that's why and that if you are get, taking it in high quantity and regularly that means what it is providing maximum energy needs so that's why that is called a staple crop now come to the next organic farming so organic farming it is not a new concept uh, it was uh, in our practice in the ancient time so that is not uh, any type of uh, new thing that's why the first point is written organic farming system in india is not new is being followed from ancient time but now due to the introduction of green revolution due to the beginning of green revolution in 1950 60 uh, that what happened that we um, started to take uh, the different method we started to use the chemicals chemical fertilizers pesticides why because we need more and more production from the limited area from the limited land and we have to get uh, that is uh, we have to do the crop cultivation more than one time that's why also we have started to use the chemical fertilizers that means chemicals are mainly used now in the indian agricultural practice so what is the problem of this chemical it has short term benefit that it can give you huge production 
but it has long term so many side effects first of all that chemicals these are uh, that is uh, directly going to the that is uh, body of us that means uh, we are uh, that is taking these chemicals through uh, different type of crops first one that means health issue second thing that is what it can easily decrease the soil fertility maybe the fertility improves within short period of time but in long term basis there is that is lack of soil fertility or soil fertility that is uh, lost so that is the problem of the use of chemicals that's why we uh, again started to do that is what organic farming organic farming means here no use of chemical fertilizers no use of pesticides here we are using the organic wastes it may be coming from crop it may be coming from animal it may be from farm wastes here no use of chemicals here whatever we are using that is organic it is a method of farming system which primarily aimed at cultivating the land and raising crops in such a way as to keep the soil alive that means we are not using chemicals so it is the soil can live happily and also in good health and soil health also remain good that's why we have started to do the organic farming but because uh, we know chemicals are not good for our health chemicals are not good for the health of the soil so that's all for today that means uh, the chapter 4 that is completed now uh, the write down the class note uh, that uh, that will be provided through the proper channel you write down the class note and also um, that is if any doubt uh, ask me through the proper query channel so thank you student, have a great day.